Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, in this lecture, we will look at a uh, popular type of test called likelihood ratio test. Uh, it has a small realm of applicability as in the, it, it works when, uh, it works really well when uh, both the null hypothesis and the composite hypothesis, I mean, and the alternative hypothesis are simple. Okay, so both null and alternative have to be simple. In that case, in fact, likelihood ratio tests are optimal in some sense, they are really good. Uh, they, they provide good trade-off between alpha and beta, okay. So that is the main story of this uh, test, uh, but let us see what it is, let us see the optimality result and understand it, okay. So we will go back to our very old problem that we started hypothesis testing with. Uh, there is a coin uh, and you want to test if it is authentic or not. Uh, the authentic uh, coin will have probability of heads 0.5 and the fake coin will have probability of heads 0.6 and you have to toss it multiple times and find out if it is authentic or not. You remember this problem, right? So this is a, this is a problem which has a, uh, I mean right now given all that we know, we know that the null hypothesis is simple, the alternative hypothesis is also simple. There is no composite hypothesis here. So testing, uh, I, I had mentioned long, long back that that case, uh, there are easy tests available and, and that is what we will discuss in this lecture, okay? So the null hypothesis is P of H equals 0.5 alternative is p of h equals 0 0.6. So these kind of situations where the null hypothesis corresponds to exactly one distribution and the alternative hypothesis corresponds to exactly one distribution are typically very easy to uh, look at and resolve, okay. Uh, but let us look at how to go about doing this. Uh, you toss the coin say n times, there are 2 power n possible outcomes and from these possible outcomes, you have to carve out a set for which you will reject null and a set for which you will accept null, okay. So the set A which we started long, long back ago, we, I called it the acceptance set. Uh, so if the outcome is in A, I will accept the null hypothesis, otherwise I will reject the null hypothesis. So both the significance level and power can be expressed in terms of A, okay. So that is the most important thing. Uh, the significance level is type 1 error, right. Given that the null is true, you end up rejecting null. So what is the probability? of the set not A, of the event not A, the, that is the outcome does not lie on the acceptance set given that the null is true, that is your type 1 error probability. What is type 2 error probability? Beta, beta is probability that you accept null given that the alternative is true, right? So beta, okay, some interesting color, I do not want this, let us make sure I pick the right color. So beta which is the type 2 error probability is probability of A given H A, the alternative hypothesis A. So power which we defined as 1 minus beta is probability of not A given H A, right? 1 minus beta is this game, right? So we know this. So, so, so everything is about the trade-off between alpha and beta, right? However, we saw how uh, when we toss the coin just three times, we could understand the trade-off clearly. So importantly, we had this question of how to decide the acceptance subset A that provides uh, this needs to provide, uh, you know, sort of um, for, you know, good, good, uh, let me just say good or optimal or optimal uh, alpha beta, okay. So some in such sense and also it should work for large n, okay. So these are the two uh, requirement. Uh, works for large n. So you, you need to, it needs to be simple, right? So if n is 100, you have 2 power 100 possibilities. You can't write down all of them and say, you know, all these guys belong to acceptance, those guys. It cannot be something very complicated. It has to be something uh, very simple and it turns out the likelihood ratio test gives you the answer to this question, okay? So we'll see why that is true. It, it's optimal in some sense and it's also uh, you know, works for really large n, gives you very, very simple answers. Now, of course, I'm, I'm describing it in the context of, uh, you know, coin toss and all that. The likelihood ratio test will work in, in, in most contexts where you have a uh, simple null hypothesis and a simple alternative hypothesis. Why most? I mean, all contexts where you have simple hypothesis for both, okay? So let's go back and revisit the size versus power uh, thing, right? So if, if you can't see it, this is alpha here on this axis and beta here on this axis. You remember this plot from long, long ago, when you do three tosses, I, I went through all, uh, you know, there are three tosses means eight outcomes, which implies 256 possible uh, sets A, right? So for every possible set A, we computed alpha and beta 
and we identified that these guys are sort of like the best, right? They seem to be the best, okay? So, this circled ones, right? Uh, best or lowest beta at a given alpha, okay? So, we saw that this was true and we did not know how to go about doing this for 100 tosses, right? So, the question is supposing you do 100 tosses, can you quickly identify these uh, these uh, circled guys, right? What are the best ones, right? That's 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 what uh, that's what I want. Once I find what what these are, I don't care about what's above it, right? Any other test is going to be worse than this in some sense. Okay, so I want to find what provides the best trade-off between alpha and beta, type one error probability and type two error probability. So for for the, if you want to formally state it, for a given alpha, find the acceptance set A that minimizes beta or maximizes one minus beta. And it should be possible for large large number of tosses. Okay, so that's the basic problem here. So this is solved by the likelihood ratio test. Okay, so for this we need simple hypothesis. So let me describe it uh, properly. So you have n samples, uh, IIDP according to some distribution, and both null and alternative are simple. So the null hypothesis is that the distribution P is from some FX, which could be a PMF, PDF, whatever, uh, and the alternative is from another distribution gx, okay. So, it, this is PMF or PDF, that is the way we think of it, okay. So, this could be PMF or PDF, think of it like that or in general could be some distribution but uh, these two are PMF or PDF, two different ones corresponding to the null and alternative hypothesis, okay. So, now we define the likelihood ratio, okay. So, we have seen likelihood before. So, the numerator here clearly you can see This is the likelihood of samples given that H A is true, is not it? This guy, this guy is that, this guy is likelihood of samples given H 0 is true, is not it? So, this is easy enough for you to see the likelihood we have defined it before in the context of estimation. The same likelihood except that this is a ratio, okay. So, it, it is uh, some people like to write it as instead of L, uh, you know you could write it as L R if you like, you know likelihood ratio to distinguish it from the likelihood uh, that we had before, but you know it is okay, L is also okay. We see it in the context. So, this is the likelihood uh, ratio and uh, what am I going to do with the likelihood ratios? Remember once I get a sample, I have my null hypothesis, I have my alternative hypothesis. Once I get a sample, likelihood ratio is a number, okay. This likelihood ratio is going to become my test statistic, okay. So, that is the idea. In the likelihood ratio test, I will reject the null hypothesis if T which my test statistic which is equal to the likelihood ratio is greater than C, okay. So, I am going to see notice if the if the alternative hypothesis were true, the likelihood ratio is going to be large, right. If the null hypothesis were true, the likelihood ratio is going to be small, okay. Why numerator is likelihood of the alternative, denominator is likelihood given the null is true. So, when actually alternative is true, numerator will be large, denominator will be small and vice versa for the opposite. So, so you can always do this kind of a test and it is reasonable in some sense, okay. So, I am going to reject null if uh, the likelihood ratio is greater than some critical value C, okay. So, this is the likelihood ratio test, okay. And this test you can perform in uh, in most samples and it is reasonable, it is only one number and it is a very reasonable thing. Even if you have 100 tosses or large amount of uh, outcomes, it is just one number. I compute this one number and compare it to a critical value. As I change the critical value, I will get different values of alpha and beta, I get a trade-off. So, this is the likelihood ratio test. Let us see it in this coin example, okay. So, in the coin example, I have x1 through xn which is Bernoulli p, okay. Oh, head and tails being 1 and 0. Uh, the null hypothesis is that probability of heads instead of probability of heads in this case, I guess I am saying p equals this, p equals 0.6, right. So, p equals probability of heads, that is the idea, okay. So, we know, we know this is true. So, how, is, how will the likelihood ratio look, okay. So, if you have uh, samples x1 through xn, uh, numerator is likelihood of likelihood given H A will be what, right? 
so, uh, so, so if you, you have a particular set of samples and it will be uh, you know so uh, for, for every h you will have a 0.6 right and for every tails you will have a 0.4 right so so you, you will have some product of 0 0.6 and 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 like that okay so maybe i should write it a little bit differently uh, maybe i'll just write it you'll have 0 0.4 0 0.6 like that how many 0 0.6 will you have how many how many 0 0.6 will you have uh, as many as uh, number of heads right so this is equal to number of heads okay so that's the likelihood how many 0 0.4 will you have this is uh, number how many uh, equal to number of tails right so number of tails is n minus w so if you assume w is the number of heads in the samples then the numerator the likelihood given a uh, given h a will work out to this 0 0.6 per w 0.4 per n minus w where w is the number of heads in the samples denominator is likelihood given uh, h naught and that's very easy right if if you if you assume that h naught is true uh, whether it's head or tails it's 0.5 so likelihood is just 0.5 per n okay so my likelihood ratio test has this very very simple form you get samples you get 100 samples 60 of them are heads 40 of them are tails let's say right so you will simply get the likelihood ratio to be 0.6 per 60 times 0.4 per 40 divided by 0.5 per 100 you have to test if that is greater than some ce or not okay so now it turns out instead of doing all that you can do a small little man manipulation here so how will i manipulate it this is equivalent to 0.6 by 0.4 both of them raised to the power w greater than c times 0.5 per n 0.4 per n right so n i know so this part is some other constant only right does not depend on anything so this is w so i can take log on both sides this is all greater than 1 right 3 by 2 so this is equivalent to w log 3 by 2 greater than uh, you know some log of some number 0.5 uh, maybe I'll write it a bit efficiently 5 power n c by 4 power n okay so log 3 by 2 you can divide by and you will get uh, you know w is greater than uh, you know log uh, 5 power n c by 4 power n divided by log 3 by 2 okay so this I will define to be some w c okay so so the the likelihood ratio test which has this lot of complicated looking expression greater than c is the same as w which is just the number of heads being greater than some wc okay so that's why i claim here likelihood ratio test is equivalent to w big greater than wc so you can keep changing this wc wc you know it, it can be from 0 to n right you could have zero heads or n heads so you keep changing wc for every wc you get a test for example if n is 100 I may have a test which rejects null if number of h is greater than 55 this is one likelihood ratio test okay so it's very natural isn't it the likelihood ratio test you, you're tossing a coin it could be 0.5 or 0.6 what is the clearest indicator of whether it's closer to 0.5 or closer to 0.6 number of heads isn't it number of heads will be slightly more if it's 0.6 than 0.5 so you, you should have a test like this these kind of tests make a lot of sense and they are also very uh, intuitive and they come from the likelihood ratio the fact that they come from the likelihood ratio is nice enough to see okay so this is the test how it turns out here is the fantastic optimality result for a likelihood ratio test if you have both null and alternative hypothesis being simple and somebody gives you a test which achieves a power of 1 minus beta at a significance level alpha you know what that means right so type 1 error probability it achieves is alpha type 2 error probability it achieves is beta okay then it turns out there will be a likelihood ratio test at the same significance level and achieving a power at least as much as 1 minus beta okay so if somebody gives you some test which achieves alpha beta i have a likelihood ratio test which will achieve same alpha but beta or lower than beta in terms of type 2 error so that is the uh, nice thing about this optimality result this is a result uh, we won't prove but it's true it's the proof is not too difficult you can look it up in some place you'll find it it's there in the book also
John Rice's book as a good proof for this. So it's a nice proof to know. Okay. So the good news from this thing is if you have a simple null and simple alternative hypothesis, likelihood ratio tests are enough. You don't have to go beyond them. Any test uh, will be worse off than a likelihood ratio test. In most cases, you can implement likelihood ratio tests also reasonably easily. So likelihood ratio tests are the way to go. You know, in fact, you can take a log of the likelihood ratio and do a log likelihood ratio test, which is what most people would do, right? You remember the when, whenever we dealt with likelihood ratios, we took log so that the product became sum and it was very easy, okay? So you, we will do that uh, typically. So you will end up getting a log likelihood ratio test or LLR test, like of the, these things are very popular, okay? So this is, uh, this is a good news, but what's the bad news? Bad news is uh, if any one of the hypotheses is composite, then uh, it doesn't hold, the optimality result doesn't hold. And in, as we've seen in, in typical scenarios, you, you only have composite hypothesis. You, you wouldn't know, you might want power against a specific alternative, but uh, generally the hypothesis is, uh, the alternative at least is uh, composite. It's, it's not a simple hypothesis, but still nevertheless, there, there can be many engineering situation where this shows up in, in, uh, in uh, quite a few uh, uh, communication scenarios. Uh, these kind of likelihood ratio tests are very, very commonly used. So uh, when, when you transmit a bit, it's either 0 or 1. For 0, you will get one type of distribution. For 1, you will get another type of distribution. And at the receiver, you have to distinguish between these two. So this is a very classic communication problem and likelihood ratio tests are very, very, very popular in uh, that context, okay? So there is an engineering context where this holds. Uh, typically in the data science, statistics type literature or problems, uh, you may have more complicated cases. So let's come back to our uh, fake coin uh, problem and settle it. Uh, you can do a size versus power for n equals 100 tosses now, right? Previously, I could do it only for n equals 3. I can do it for n equals 100 tosses, okay? So how will my test be? My optimal test, I know, is going to reject H0 if number of heads is greater than C. And the C critical value can go from 0 to 100, okay? For 0, if C is 0, I'm going to be rejecting all the time. So uh, the alpha will be 1, right? So this, this will correspond to C equals 0 and so on, right? C equals 1. So this, this goes to higher values of C. And what do I know about this point, for instance? What do I know about this point? This has a certain alpha and at this alpha, any other test will be above this only. Can only be above this. What do I mean by above this? You, you take any other test and plot the alpha comma beta, the beta will be above this, okay? Uh, let me be precise. We'll have beta above this point. Any other test at same alpha, okay? Any other test that achieves the same alpha will have beta above this because this likelihood ratio test is point, this point is here, okay? That's the optimality result of the likelihood ratio test. Okay, so this sort of uh, summarizes uh, likelihood ratio test. Hopefully, you see the power of it and the uh, you know difficulty with it. Uh, but it's an important result to know in this area. Okay, so that concludes this lecture. Uh, we'll move on to the next one in the next lecture.